of Australia and New Zealand. It's in there and he's got a whole thing about it. How they tried to feed all the refugee camps in Africa with that plant because it's got all the vitamin B12 thing in and then soybeans came in and they dropped the project. But it's everywhere in the bush from Sydney to Cooktown. The nodding top. Yeah, or uh, thick head is another common name for it. So the name actually gets in black sticky seeds on this flower, flower seed head there that's, that's just like a pig on, on this plant. You know, is, um, is a really fantastic one of looking at what, what's going on underneath the soil. Quite often it, you look at what's sparse on top there. You're actually looking at what this root structure is doing. Um, it's got a really fine uh, mat of, of fine bitter roots. And quite often it's the first thing that comes up after people use Roundup, you know. Um, it's, it's, to me it's about establishing the biology and, and establishing all the root structure there and, and covering the, the soil with a, a mulch, a living mulch of the root, which is then in turn actually able to use, use the uh, sunlight, um, the sugars and that, and to get out through the roots, feeding the biology and having that interaction that's occurring there. Um, and establishing the biology that's been killed off by the use of Roundup. Um, a lot of countries like Fiji and, and um, might utilise this as a um, medicinal, so for fungal issues on your skin, they're probably going on the skin. Uh, stomach upsets, taking a few leaves uh, to sort out any um, stomach problems along the way. Is, this is on my list. Um, Isabel Shepherd, she was a really well known herbalist, she died recently. She sent off these seeds that she wrote about that were supposed to be incredibly nutritious, and she got back this, and she had them in her backyard. Right? <laughs> so ever since I read about that in her survival book, which is a really good book, and I highly recommend it, uh, it's called Survival. So now, because in the sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but when you're in the bush, you get them all through your bloody pants, you know? And rather than sitting there and picking them out, I tuck them away and go to the op shop and get another pair. But now, I soak them. <laughs> I put them in the water and soak them all night and then hang them in the tree and then when they sprout, they're easy to get out and you get a feed at the same time. And they're highly nutritious. The problem is the solution. <laughs> and it's a, it's a great manure, a green manure in your garden, you know, because these seeds are so prolific, they'll just, and then you just pull them up and lay them down. Well, I actually carry a cloth just for that. Well, it's not just for that. If you're in a bushfire, you can get it wet, wrap it around here. There's lots of uses for it nice strong piece of cloth, but um, I collect it when I see it, I just go around and collect it and then when I get to my camp, soak it overnight and just tie it on the back of my pack and just keep dipping it until it's brought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, this is um, tree lettuce, this is a superior type one which has got the spotted edge, um, that goes up to a plant about so high um, and it can give you lettuce, um, a great friend of mine Michael Elba who's in Mariva. Um, he sells lots of this at the, the markets and I love the way he promotes it. He goes, you can buy a bag of lettuce off me or I can give you this plant. You could um, just have lettuce every time you want it, you know, for three to six months. Um, periods that actually grow lettuce during the hot period. Um, and it's a fantastic plant and I could promote anyone to actually take on a lettuce type plant in their garden. Um, this would be a, it's a superior tree lettuce. Um, please join and be part of any of the seed savers in Far North. And that's what I pointed out with Lisa before, she's part of the... Uh, the seed savers in Cranberry and, yeah, and uh, does a lot of... We've got, it. We've got heaps at home we can... Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's an awesome, awesome one. So um, over the weekend, hope people get to have a taste. The other one is quite bitter, There's, which has got the normal type leaves. There's a few leaves, but one's there, but they're more bitter. This hasn't got the bitter texture. Mm. But interestingly, um, Mangali dairy, which is a biodynamic dairy up this way at Miller Miller, we're actually just looking at um, seeing it coming up in the lawn all the time. I mean, the plants we've got growing in the garden, and they started to look at the concept of actually growing it as a, um, a winter crop for the cattle. Mm -hmm. It's got such a potential, and that's, that's the sort of stuff that we've got to look at, is in seeing what's happening and how we can actually utilise those things and, and look outside the square. So it's a fantastic story, and I'd um, love to see what the outcome is with that, because um, that's, that's a classic. It wants to be there. It wants to be there. Nodding top. Nodding top. Because it's nodding over. Nodding top. New South Wales, I don't know about here. It's a guava. There's quite a few different species. But one thing they've done a lot of studies on is the new growth. So wherever there's a new growth, you pinch that, there's 100 times more vitamin C than a lemon. And they've been curing malaria with it in New Guinea. Yeah, one one new growth per cup of tea. And it's got all the vitamin C. Yep, that's the new growth.
just there. Just that has a hundred times more than a lemon. And the fruit is delicious. The wood is usable for a lot of different crafts and building. I built a whole bloody house out of wood. Yeah, nice. Mate, it's good. Yeah, um, yeah boat, you can make uh, longbows out of it. Dangles. Yeah. 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 Cool. Any and questions? It, to me, it's an indicator of, of its, the strength of that timber is because its resilience is the fact that it doesn't have to have bark on there. It's actually not, I'm becoming more aware of that. You know, when you see things that have got a, a big, thick bark, it's because it needs protection from the timber quite often. Not all cases, but I've certainly noticed that some of these things that you see that don't have any much bark on it at all, they're very resilient and strong timber. Uh, it's a support species. So there's kind of like grasses coming up in this area, which is um, it's creating a ground cover, which is an awesome thing for the soil, but it's also in its digging its root, but it could also be taking away the nutrient from the plants that you want to grow. So using a cummer, you can chop and drop this and create the, the hay sort of environment and you've got so much you know like you're just growing and you just sort of lay that around all over and it'll probably take you 10 minutes to just get in there and then that'll just spring the lemongrass to spring back up again and you can already smell the essential oils coming out of that so that's just going to keep um, the pests and bugs away one of my favourite tools is this, the hardier things, or, the, or a, um, a hoe. Um, it's very important to have it nice and sharp, but how I deal with this here is, is by um, chopping off. So you, you're just, <laughs> just below the, the roots, that allowed, probably didn't quite get it, but I chopped it off there. And if you want to get rid of it completely, it's quite hardy, and, and, and then I expose a bit of a root there. And they're using all that as a, um, as what Toddy did as far as having a green manure there, you know. Yeah, so don't. Take that yeah. stuff away. It's all, it's all happening right there. This is where all the action is happening. And I can't quite often feel right about exposing that to the sunlight because that's all the biology that's occurring in that root zone there is, is, um, is, is fantastic. But, you know, that's some of the things you have to do about competition around our trees, our plants. So when they're smaller, you can be pulling them up and doing the same thing. But using them as a, as a green manure is, and, um, and, a, and a coverage is, is what it's all at. So when they get bigger and hardier, out, like, this is the tool that I used in, in doing that. Yeah, so that whole po old paradigm of lifting it up and putting it in the green waste bin and calling those guys to come and take it to the dump is just a waste of resource and energy. It's literally that easy. Dig it up, turn it over, feeds the soil. It's removing your fertility when you're doing that. You are, yeah. And Taking you're it away. transport and it's just, just so wasteful. This, this is a uh, $10 tool. I come thoroughly... On recommend that. Uh, you know, I do a few little add-ons for putting that and a bit of paint on there because it really easily drops without a bit of colour on it and, and mm, never, never yeah. be found again. That's a good Except idea. You stand on it. All the time. <laughs> yeah, but um, for a really cheap tool that's that's a fantastic thing to be able to do exactly what you're doing and collecting other resources for um, composting and everything. Yeah, I've made out of recycled materials that I got from um, the Eclipse Festival. And four pieces, pretty easy, quite actually quite light, and the steel on the bottom. Um, and I've just been moving around. I think you know it's that principle, I guess, of the chicken tractor where they dig up all the weeds and you know um, put manure down the rest of it, and uh, basically yeah, give a good environment to to plant in after you move it along. So you're throwing your weeds in there when you? Yeah, throwing some weeds in there or herbs. <laughs> Um, weeds, also, it's out. like I don't have a compost pit, I just give all my compost to them. You plant that and watch that grow, and then actually eat the fruit is one of the most beautiful human experiences there is. I just wanted to talk about this one, Acacia. Acacia we've got some thousand species in, of Acacia, common name wattles, all over Australia, in every habitat. Um, and they're really high in saponins. So this is what you're going to wash your hands with while you're here. You just take... Pour, you want to pour some water in my hands? Mm -hmm. The original people ate the seeds from 40 of the species. And most of our teachers are gone, so we don't know all the 40 species. We have to relearn it. What is that saying? Uh, information can be forgotten but not lost. Mm. So we've got to get it back. I only know three species. 
but they're all high in saponins. Can you hear that? And some of them are really high, and you can feel. Here, you squeeze them in your hand. Crush them up, and then pour a bit. Of, you can pour a bit of water in your hand. So while you're here, this is what you can use. Some of the hibiscus leaves are as well. And red ash, you know red ash? It's a wattle. Red ash. An acacia, but the yeah. common name is a wattle. Yeah. Yeah. Feel that. Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, hygiene is really important. Mm. Well, we're here, it's yeah. a nice thing to actually have a look at some of the soil and have a, um, have a feel of, of what's going on around here. We've actually got quite a, uh, a lot of um, mulch here, the sugar cane mulch. Um, the these mulched up the trees around there. And, um, and I guess it's any other additives, things have changed, putting any mill mud around there. Yeah, a bit of mill mud. That's, that's the biggest thing that I promote is just people like, instead of standing back and having a look, is actually getting down and, and getting dirty with it and having a, having a look and see what, what changes are actually happening. You know, so what are, we, what are we gathering from here? You know, we can see that there's, there's quite a good moisture content there. The, the soil's able to hold together. Mm -hmm. It's not just falling apart by, by doing that. It's um, not excessive. It's quite sandy soil. Um, it's black and, and in colour, um, which is a good indication to me of a lot of organic material and, and um, some change, some changes there. So yeah, I was about to do that. So. I'll promote everybody to do that because I, I think one of the most um, forgotten senses that, that we've got is our smell. You know, when, when there's something you're about to eat, something we really want to get in touch with, the nose is yeah, my best indicator. Of it.